Good morning, everyone. Uh, today is January 14th, 2021, and this is our uh, extra assignments or alternate assignments, whatever you want to call it, for parliamentary procedure for students who are in ag classes, not doing a leadership contest, but want to learn a little bit about parliamentary procedure. So, what we're going to do is kind of slowly work you through the rules of parliamentary procedure. What that means is that we are going to be learning about Robert's Rules of Order, which means that in order to conduct a meeting in an orderly fashion, when you have a huge group of people, you need to have rules to maintain order. This is how Congress runs their meetings. This is how all professional organizations are going to run their meetings according to these certain set of rules. So we're going to go very slowly, just take a few at a time over a couple of days and give you a little bit at a time. We're going to learn what the what rules you have to follow while you are com, uh, competing or while you're running a meeting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start where you can find the resources that we are going to reference while we're going through this unit. So I'm going to share my screen with you here. So this is the homepage for michiganffa.org. Uh, if you've never been here before, you can play around here a little bit. There's, uh, there's quite a bit of good information about FFA in general and uh, some of the sponsors that are involved there. What are the things that you can do and that sort of thing. But what we are looking for are, uh, if you go under FFA Association here, our career development events. If you click on that and then come down to leadership contests and then all the way down toward the bottom here is parliamentary procedure. So these are the rules if you're going to actually compete in the parliamentary procedure contest. Now, uh, for those of you who are either freshmen or sophomores, you would actually uh, compete in the green hand conduct of meetings contest. It's a little bit lighter. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a green hand is a either a first or a freshman or sophomore that is in their first year of FFA. So for those of you who are freshmen who are in an ag class, congratulations, you're a green hand. So you would compete in this green hand conduct to meetings contest, which demonstrates some of the rules of parliamentary procedure and also uses opening ceremonies, which is the way that we start our meetings in the FFA. So for, but for the purposes of these assignments and kind of what we're just getting some background knowledge on parliamentary procedure, we are going to look at these three documents down here. The rubrics for handling motion, the parliamentary procedure motion descriptions, and the rules of motions. So I have also, so if you want to click on these, it'll bring up the actual document. This particular one has, so first of all, don't be scared. It's okay. There's a lot of information here. I get that. I understand. But we're going to go through these very slowly. And what these do is these just tell you all the different types of motions. And some of these you would almost rarely ever use. But we're going to, you know, at least get started with them and try to learn a little bit of background knowledge on what it is that these things are required to do. I'm going to find my, I want under parliamentary procedure, I want the rules of motions. So everything that we are going to learn during this whole unit is right here on this piece of paper. So if you knew everything on this piece of paper, you are golden. So we're going to take this again. This looks confusing and it looks like there's a whole lot of information here and there is, but we're going to do this very slowly, just a couple of these at a time and kind of understand what all of these crazy things mean. So the first thing that I'm going to have you do is, so this is gives you an idea of where you can find these things. You'll also see that in our Zoology 2 classroom, I've posted under week 20, I've posted just as a material, this, you can use this as a reference, I've posted all three of the documents that you'll need to complete the assignment. Okay, so what I want you to do, and I haven't posted this for you yet, what I'd like for you to do is start a slides presentation, and I'm going to create an assignment for you, and I'm going to give you a copy of this exact slide. So you'll be able to take this and use it and copy it. This is what I want you to do for every motion. And again, we're just going to do a few at a time over and give you several days. This is not going to be super stressful. You're just going to have to reference those materials that we were just looking at. We're going to do this slowly so that some of this starts to make some sense. And then you'll start to, when you hear these things, they'll start to, uh, you'll start to understand them and make a little bit more sense. So starting here, you're going to have your own copy of this slideshow. You should put your name up here and then you are going to just copy this slide 
several times, as many as you need for as many as you need to do this. So if we, so you're going to take this slide and we're just going to, if we copy this and paste it here. So we've got another motion. So our first one that we are going to do, undo, undo, um, is we're just going to, we're going to do a main motion. And you can, so then we need to find out the purpose of a main motion. So if we go back to our uh, zoology page and we go to our parliamentary procedure information, let's go to, let's use this document here. Okay. So this, this is the third document. We haven't looked at this one yet. So this is uh, more information organized. In it. It's the same information, but it's organized in a little bit different way that might make things a little bit more clear. But these are designed to uh, be for the actual parliamentary procedure contest. So for instance, this says that these are district motions, meaning that the that they would select a few of these motions. There are 10 of them. There are 10 types of motions. They would select three or four of those for you to have to demonstrate during the contest at districts. Then at regionals, if, if you know your team were to make it on, you would add a few more of these regional uh, motions. Then there's a few more that they add at states. And then this is, and then another one that, uh, that you can use anytime. So the idea being that those get a little more complicated and we'll get to those eventually, but really it's these 10 district ones that I wanna get through for sure so that we kind of have a base knowledge of some of the things that we need to do in order to conduct business. So the first thing that we are gonna do is we are going to talk about a main motion, okay? So to, for instance, for this slide, and you're gonna to need to do this in your uh, presentation, you need to figure out the purpose of this uh, type of motion. So we can, our purpose of our motion, we'll see if this actually lets me copy and paste. It did. Okay, so the purpose of the main motion is to bring business before the assembly. This would sound something like this. If the chairperson, uh, we've done everything else that we've needed to, and the chairperson has opened up the floor, someone would stand and uh, be recognized. So they would stand up and they would say, Madam President, they would recognize that person, so they'd say, Mr. Sheridan. They say, I, and then the person out in the assembly would say to the chairperson, you would say, I move that, that we organize an FFA meeting on January 7th. And that's the end of your motion. That is a main motion. You are proposing an item of business to bring before the assembly. So what I need you all to do we're going to do a main motion. That's going to be your first one. Then, so you need to fill out this part. You need to fill out the purpose of the motion. You need to figure out what type of motion it is. Is it a main motion, an incidental motion, a subsidiary motion, privileged or unclassified? You'll find all that information on these fancy charts right here. You can go through here and you can see that there's privilege motions, subsidiary motions, main, incidental, and unclassified. And you can figure out which types of motions that that particular motion is. So in this case, we've got a main motion. So it's going to be a main. So it's going to be a main. And then I want you to answer all these questions. And again, all of these things are located right here. Or you can also locate them here. So I would recommend for each one of these that you look at all of these different places, okay? Because they're all going to be a little different. You can think of these as like flashcards. If they were like, a, if you had a stack of these that you could, if we were preparing for a contest, you might cut these up into little things and you'd draw one out of a hat and you'd have to, you know, figure out exactly what it is. So you can see if we zoom in here that and a main motion over here, so it's a main motion it's the lowest in precedent. Its purpose is to bring business before the assembly. So then it talks about the, the, the steps to actually make that happen. Okay. So then if you went to a different, our other document here, and you can talk, and it mentions here that you need a second. It is debatable and amendable. You need a majority vote. It can be reconsidered and it takes precedence over nothing. So it's not that important. 
So some of these other motions as we get into these are going to be things that take precedence over that. So if somebody stands up and, you know, makes another motion while there's a main motion on the floor, we got to solve that other thing first. So there's a lot of information here, folks. Please don't get frustrated. Please don't get overwhelmed. We're going to take this very slowly. So what I want you to do is just go through and answer all these questions about a main motion. Can you interrupt the speaker? And that's what these things mean. So in that one chart that shows everything, you can see all of this stuff. Interrupt. Does it need a second? Is it debatable? What kind of vote do you need? Is it amendable? Do you, can it be reconsidered? All of these things are on this chart. So really we're just taking the information from these other documents and we're putting them in your own reference. And that's kind of just registering some of those things in your brain so that we're using this over and over and over again until we get a little more familiar with these types of motions. So I will, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, I'm going to create three types of motions and I'll type them in up here and I'll send you that uh, and I'll send you this in an assignment that will be due on Monday. So you're going to have three types of motions that you're going to need to research in those documents and answer all these questions about, and then that'll be due on Monday. And then we'll talk about it and see if anybody has any questions, and then we'll go from there. So I hope that that helps explain just a little bit about what we're going to do, how this is going to work. Um, I, I will give you some references to be able to hear how some of these um motions sound, but we also need to have this background knowledge. You need to know whether, uh, you know, a uh, point of order is an incidental or a subsidiary motion. You need to know whether, uh, you know, ri rising to a point of order needs a second or not. Um, you know, this is just, it's kind of background knowledge that we just kind of need to build. So we're going to create this uh, slides presentation as we go through. It's not going to be terribly difficult. We're just going to add a little bit to it at a time. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I will plan to talk to everybody soon. Have a great day.